We are calling for a reinvestment of those funds into black, indigenous, racialized, impoverished, and other targeted communities. My name is Cyrus Marcus Ware, and I'm an artist, an activist, and a scholar. I'm an organizer with Black Lives Matter Canada and Black Lives Matter Toronto. Millions around the world demanded that Black Lives Matter in the summer of 2020 after the killing of George Floyd. We're coming up on a year since George Floyd's killing. How did it affect you? I was, like many people, struck by the violence um, of what we saw. I chose not to watch the, uh, you know, almost nine minute video of them brutally m murdering this man. Um, I was uh, heartbroken, you know, that we were still in these conditions in 2020. And then, of course, immediately on the heels of George Floyd's death was the death of Regis Krasinski Paquette here in Toronto. And, you know, again, a mysterious death in the company of the police. What did you think of the response afterwards? After the summer of 2020, a lot more people understand what defunding the police could look like, that it could mean making sure that we have funding for housing, making sure that we have funding for food for all, making sure that we have these things in our community that are going to just make us stronger and actually safer. We're also seeing, you know, some moves uh, on the political scene around the defund movement. These pilot programs would allow for a non-police-led response response for non-emergency, non-violent calls. Just last week, Toronto's City Council approved a pilot project that would see civilians, instead of police, dispatched to emergency mental health calls. It's change that is going to make us stronger and it's going to make us a, a healthier community uh, that is actually rooted in a sense of safety and justice. You've been vocal about racism within the LGBTQ communities. What kind of changes are you seeing there? This emergence uh, that has always been here of Black uh, and Indigenous uh, trans leadership uh, has always been a forefront of our communities, but was being ignored and erased through whitewashing practices. And what we saw this summer was people saying, absolutely, no, let's rise up these voices. Well, now, after everything that's happened, and as we find ourselves in the revolutionary moment that we're in, more and more queer and trans folks are saying, hold on, I actually think I get it now. So I think we're seeing more people uh, getting on board with supporting Black, queer and trans people. You use artwork to send messages of hope, of equality, of acceptance. Tell me more about that. I've been drawing massive, large-scale portraits of activists as part of an activist portrait series, honoring and celebrating uh, their love and their labor and their organizing. I think that art and activism are essential uh, components. They go together uh, like peanut butter and jam, like they absolutely work together. Art uh, makes activism better. Creative thinkers in activism helps us to do better strategy, helps us to, to, to imagine new ways because we're literally able to imagine uh, new worlds being possible. Uh, but they also, you know, are the, bear, the, the backbone of activist movements, the banners, the textiles, the posters, the movements, the gestures, the dances, all of these activist aesthetics that are, are creatively inspired are so essential. Cyrus teaches students about that intersectionality as an assistant professor in the School of the Arts at McMaster University. When thinking about the next generation, what advice do you have for them? Now is the time to make bold moves. Now is the time to be brave, perhaps braver than we've ever been change is happening before us and we need everybody involved in shaping that change. And Asha Tomlinson joins me now with more on that conversation. Hi Asha, good to see you. Good to see you, Janella. So Cyrus has been on the front lines of the BLM Toronto movement for some time. So what are the hopes for the future? Well, you know, Cyrus has seen it all. 
Janela. He's been pushing for justice, for equality, for change, as we know, for almost three decades. So when I asked him if he felt the momentum has slowed down now that we're in 2021 with everything going on, uh, you just heard, no, he has high hopes for the future. He calls this an ongoing revolution. He continues to work with Black Lives Matter Canada and Black Lives Matter Toronto, and in fact said that the BLM organization worldwide was just nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. So he's feeling pretty hopeful, but he says the ultimate marker here he believes if we can recognize and safeguard the rights of the most marginalized in the LGBTQ2 community, particularly transgender people, then he believes that not only will we have reached uh, equality, true equality, but that that is the overall accomplishment. So what other advice did Cyrus have for people who wanted to get involved in their own communities? He says now is the most beautiful time to get engaged, to get involved. Uh, but this is an interesting point, right? He says we need to look at care and rest in new ways right now. He encourages people not just to get involved head first, but to build up as well a regimen, a practice of self-care. You don't hear that much, right? And when you look at the double barrel of the COVID pandemic, along with the racial reckoning that many people are facing, I mean, he says activist burnout is a very real mm. thing. It's very damaging. And so his advice is slow down when you need to, have your support systems in place, and that'll get you through because this is definitely a long-term fight. All right, CBC's Asha Tomlinson. Always good to see you, Asha. Thanks for being with us. You too. Take care. And for more stories like this, you can visit our website, cbc.ca slash beingblackincanada, or check us out on Instagram at cbcbeingblackincanada.